Well, it's come to light that CNN commentator David Urban lobbied for transportation company Norfolk Southern, the rail operator at the center of the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, that released toxic chemicals into the air. This is according to Media Matters. Until 2020, Urban was the president of lobbying firm American Continental Group, where he lobbied for Norfolk Southern on transportation issues related to railways, starting in 2009, according to federal disclosure forms. He and his firm collected at least $1.1 million, according to a calculation of federal data by ProPublica. CNN political correspondent Dana Bash held a roundtable discussion on Sunday about the East Palestine trail derailment, derailment featuring Urban. And according to Media Matters, CNN never disclosed or asked Urban about his work for the rail company. Now, we've reached out to CNN about this matter and have not heard back at the time of this taping. Wow. I, I know who, exactly who this is. I see him on CNN frequently. He's on a lot. Oh, yeah. And we should get into some of the other <laughs> things that he has a conflict of interest about that he talks about on the show. But, but, but keep this in mind. During the segment, Dana Bash you know, mentioned the fact that Trump ha the Trump administration had rolled back some of these regulations. To which Urban replied, quote, there's plenty of blame to go around on this. These kinds of things happen. But what's important is we do the right thing moving forward to take care of people in these towns and communities. And then he went on to criticize the Biden administration for their handling of the crisis. Now, I have no problem at all criticizing the Biden administration sure. for the crisis. But running cover for the direct role that the Trump administration played in setting the stage for this crisis is not what you would expect a neutral commentator to do. It's what you would expect a lobbyist to do. Right, right. And regardless, I don't care how neutral he may or may not be, he, you have to disclose someone who was working in a very high up position in lobbying. I mean, you know, the revolving door between government and lobbying and media is, uh, is disgusting in and of itself. But um, you, you got to, that's got to be disclosed. I, I guess I, I'm not saying don't put him on the panel, I guess. You're, you can hear out his perspective, but. The, the, the Chiron should say, and this guy, this guy worked for lobbying railroads. Well, they can't do that because any uh. reasonable person watching that and seeing that Chiron wouldn't believe a word that's coming out of this man's mouth. He also apparently uh, worked to help elect Donald Trump, which is another conflict of interest, which should be disclosed. Now, plenty of people on CNN yeah, I mean, that's a, worked to elect any number, worked on yeah. the Clinton campaigns and all of this. Frankly, a lot of people on those liberal channels in uh, MSNBC also worked for the Bush administration administration and things like that. So, But all of them, I believe, should be disclosing those mm -hmm. kinds of relationships if they're going to be continuing to basically run cover. I and mean, we discussed this last week um, with Jen Psaki going on to have a show on, is it CNN or CNN, MSNBC or CNN, CNN? I can't remember now. Oh, I can't either. Um, MSNBC. But, you know, the, the question being, what is going to be her role there? And mm -hmm. is she going to be willing to be critical of the Biden administration? And what does this mean for the audience who eventually is going to forget the way right. that everybody has forgotten about uh, Bush's comms woman over on MSNBC? Right. Um, that, that, that's the role that she's kind yeah, of Yeah, right now, most people watching probably know that Jen Psaki is fresh out of the administration, unlike this guy right. uh, who is doing rail commentary. You would have no idea that uh, that he was a lobbyist right. formerly, but you're right. The right the the memory fades. Um, you're talking about um, Nicole Wallace. Nicole, Nicole Wallace, yeah. exactly. By the way, Urban also has urged. This is all from um, Media Matters. This commentator has urged a military strike against Iran without any disclosure that he worked for defense contractors. He's praised then Defense Secretary Mark Esper without the network disclosing that he personally lobbied the Defense Department on behalf of defense contractors. Mm. He repeatedly attacked environmental protections without disclosing that he lobbied for fossil fuel-related clients, including Norfolk Southern, which, of course, transports coal and other toxic chemicals. Uh, he repeatedly pushed for the passage of a trade agreement on air after he was hired to lobby for it. The network didn't disclose that conflict of interest. And he was he touted a lobbying client's opposition to a tax bill without any disclosure that he was being paid to do so. You really want to tell your viewers who the person they're hearing from is. I mean, that's a pretty basic thing. They should have some understanding of and appreciation of where this view person's views come from, and then they can decide for themselves. Well, people should know that this is more common than not, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, Norfolk Southern has been accused of making plans to destroy evidence in the Ohio train derailment by moving wrecked rail cars from the site, according to residents' lawyers. 
In a statement to Rising, Norfolk Southern said they are unable to comment on active litigation or the proceedings, but they do want to provide some context for our reporting. They said, quote, we're working hard to build the trust between Norfolk Southern and the residents of East Palestine. I'm attaching a letter from President and CEO Alan Shaw, who has personally been back to East Palestine many times since the derailment happened, meeting and talking with locals and community leaders, and not just easy conversations. Please see our description for the full response they provided. So the story here, of course, is that they are being accused of moving up, moving the site, cleaning up the site before an investigation into what caused the accident that could potentially, you know, link uh, liability, uh, you know, make the case for liability for Northern Southern. Uh, do you, can do you be think done. that's? Do you think that's? Fa- I, they want to clean it up to. Neutral, they could want to clean it up to neutralize the hazardous. Well, that's all the argument that they're making. Um, they're, I mean, they they have claimed that they have the whole reason they did the controlled burn and all of that, uh, putting some barriers and and uh, nearby rivers and streams, is because they have neutralized the threat. They're the ones with the, mm-hmm. in, you know conjunction with the EPA that are doing these air tests and telling people to go back to their homes. What they've done, what they're saying is that they're giving right, people two days. The they're giving people two days to investigate. The site, Mm -hmm. which people feel like is an arbitrary and too brief time period to thoroughly investigate in a way that they're going to need to do to prove liability down the line. Yeah, I'm that's uh, it's very concerning because we do not no one should want to see them escape paying the full price for their action. They should have to pay. They should have to make right for everyone affected by the derailment and they're going to try to scoot out of it and they're going to have their representatives on cable news apparently not telling you that that's what they're doing right. and explaining why yeah this happens all the time it's now it's no worth noting that this would be a non-issue if as some legal experts advise we had what is called a strict liability standard so that when people are engaged in extremely hazardous mm-hmm. business practices like transporting toxic materials, if there is an accident, they're strictly liable, meaning that you don't have to actually prove negligence um, or any of the things that you need to establish by looking at the crash right. site. The fact of the crash and the spill is proof that there was an accident that they are therefore liable for. Um, but unfortunately, I don't know if you remember the tort reform debates in the 1990s, but there was right. a lot of business-backed conservative pushback against that kind of um uh, legal framing because it would have business interests liable in situations exactly like this. And now the onus, as always, is on the townspeople to have to prove, prove causation, to prove negligence, and a process that's very expensive and for which they're much worse equipped than a multi billion dollar uh, railroad company. Mm. Well, we will continue to follow that story, of course, and we'll have more rising right after this.